Well, the main tool these days for a digital editor, video editor, uh, any editor will know about this is, you know, for the longest time, well, Avid is like the studio standard, Avid, to cut on Avid, but that's like a, a much more expensive and quite honestly, in my opinion, a lot more primitive of a software as far as you know, the, the, the versatility. But I mean, that's the studio standard and it still is, but for independent filmmakers and editors, Final Cut Pro for the longest was the standard. But man, honestly, the last maybe two or three years, a lot of us, including myself, have switched to Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, because it's just proven to surpass Final Cut in a lot of different ways uh, from it, <clears throat> It accepts a lot more different formats of video seamlessly, which is huge because, you know, now there's so many different camera formats and different cameras that uh, independent filmmakers are shooting with. Premiere Pro, it just ingests all of them seamlessly. Final Cut Pro, it claims to do the same, but it's nowhere near. And also Final Cut Pro, as you know, you have to render everything Whereas Premiere Pro, it does live rendering, and a lot of the footage you bring in, it just comes in seamlessly. You don't have to render, it just plays back you know, perfectly. That, so that was huge. So I was very reluctant and skeptical too, but because everyone else was doing it, people that I trusted told me, you gotta switch. I switched, so first and foremost, I would say, if you still use Final Cut, I mean, it'll do the job, but it's worth switching to Adobe Premiere Pro especially if you're someone like me who edits but also does motion graphics and visual effects because then that person inevitably uses After Effects a lot. And then to use Premiere Pro with After Effects, um, you could go back and forth from those programs seamlessly. And it works together in conjunction knowing that there's people like me that's simultaneously gonna be going from Premiere Pro to Adobe After Effects back and forth. Um, I would say, so those two programs are my key tools right now. Um, and then, uh, if you do a lot of motion graphics and, you know, uh, animation stuff, you know, you inevitably you're going to do a lot of Photoshop stuff, uh, Illustrator, you know, the more kind of traditional design programs, you're going to use that in conjunction with After Effects. So. Uh, the Creative Cloud in general is probably my best tool, and they're they're freaking awesome. Uh, Final Cut got lazy, man. Apple got lazy. They just kind of, kind of just stopped evolving Final Cut Pro as a program, and stopped catering to like professionals. And it just, yeah. And and Premiere and, and Adobe took advantage of that, and they just kept evolving their um, programs. So now most um, creative professionals that use software, they, they all go to Adobe. Um, I would say audio-wise, um, um, uh, Pro Tools is my main tool for that. And you know, audio uh, is, for an editor, just as important as the visual, oftentimes more so, um, is, is being able to do good audio um, editing. And for 360, the main and important program is right now is Color. Uh, it's a French company, Color. They came out with uh, a stitching program called Auto Panel Stitch, which is probably the best stitching program there is for 360 video filmmaking. Um, uh, so that's probably the main tool. And, you know, like any program, it takes some learning curve to get comfortable with it. Um, but so Color was recently bought out by GoPro because GoPro, unbeknownst to them, have become very integral in the whole 360 revolution. I mean, in filmmaking in general, I think GoPro, uh, they probably surprise themselves by how, how important GoPro has become for drones and now for 360 vi uh, you know, videos. But they're reluctant for a while. They just, they, we were asking GoPro, like, hey, come up with your own rig, come up with your own software. 
and they just they they could care less because they're just making so much money from whatever they're already selling but they've in the last year realized so they bought out color the stitching software so now gopro owns color and i'm sure with gopro involved they're going to keep evolving the software and then gopro recently came out with their own not just 360 rig but 3d 360 rig so if gopro finally has embraced it and they're probably going to become even more integral to VR filmmaking.